Hello everyone and welcome to this fifth video dedicated to the initial distillation of crude oil. We have already seen together the characteristics of crudes, the salting, the hot and cold prey train and the liquid vapor traffic in the column. We also saw how to arbitrate the amount of naphtha versus that of kerosene. It is now time to see how to arbitrate light and heavy diesel quantities. We start from a light diesel flow of 37 tons per hour. Typically, a side stripper is also installed on the light diesel cut. Remember, the side stripper which was installed for kerosene was considered to manage the flashpoint of the kerosene and thus to be able to produce a kerosene with a reasonable flashpoint while maintaining a not too high naphtha flow. As far as light diesel is concerned, the objective is also to revaporize the light molecules of light diesel. This will of course have an effect on the flash point of light diesel, but also on the freezing point of the kerosene. Indeed, as we see on this graph, when we increase the stripping steam of the light diesel cut, we increase the flash point of light diesel. This is due to the fact that the stripping steam has re-entrained the lightest molecules of light diesel towards the kerosene cut. Thus, when considering a stripping ratio of 27 kg of stripping steam per ton of light diesel, we see that we have an increase in the flash point of about 8 degrees C. Moreover, as we just said before, stripping the light diesel cut also improves the freezing point of kerosene. Indeed, since we have removed part of light diesel molecules, so the ones at low freezing point, we logically improve the freezing point of kerosene. With a stripping ratio of 27 kg of stripping steam per ton of light diesel, we see that we have an increase in about 1 degree C on the freezing point of the kerosene. I remind you that stripping a hydrocarbon cut only influences the quantity of light molecules on this cut, but has no effect on the heavy tail of this cut. Be careful! When we inject stripping steam in the column, we will find this steam at the head of the column and the calories at the condenser will increase since we must condense this stripping steam. It is now time to focus on the maximum rate of light diesel to be withdrawn from the tower. In the first video, we considered a cut point between light and heavy diesel of 300 degrees C. This is a fairly typical value and may be of interest in the case where the refinery routes light diesel and heavy diesel in two different hydro desulfurization units. It is known that the so-called easy molecules to desulfurize have a boiling point of about 300 degrees C. Above 300 degrees C, sulfur molecules are more difficult to desulfurize. So, to make it simple, cutting at 300 degrees C means routing molecules that are easy to desulfurize in light diesel and molecules that are difficult to desulfurize in heavy diesel. It is now time to focus on heavy diesel. Remember, we arbitrarily set a cut point of 350 degrees C between heavy diesel and residue. But can we cut longer or should we cut shorter the heavy diesel? The maximum amount of heavy diesel is related to a property set by local regulations. This property linked to the behavior of diesel at low temperature is known as the cloud point. This cloud point is the equivalent of the freezing point for the kerosene. The cloud point for a diesel is the temperature at which the diesel starts to be cloudy. But what makes the diesel cloudy? It is the heaviest molecules of the diesel. So, we have to take care of the heavy molecules in the heavy diesel to respect the cloud point asked by the regulations. Note that cloud point regulations are seasonal. For example, in France, in summer, the regulation asks for 5 degrees C cloud point when, in winter, a value of minus 5 degrees C is imposed. The lower the cloud point, the less we want heavy molecules. In our case, it's the cloud point of the mixture light plus heavy diesel which matters. 
In fact, it is this mixture of molecules that will constitute the final diesel pool that will come out of the refinery. In our current case, we see that the cloud point of the light plus heavy diesel mixture is 2.6 degrees C. In this example, we will consider that we are in summer season. Then, we see that the amount of diesel could be increased to aim for 5 degrees C. But, as a first approach, I propose you to keep this value and then consider a margin. A side stripper is also installed on a heavy diesel cut. The advantage of stripping heavy diesel is to re-entrain the lightest molecules of heavy diesel to the light diesel, and therefore better sort the sulfur molecules. The standard stripping ratio is about 20 kg of stripping steam per ton of heavy diesel, which will correspond for our case to 1.2 ton per hour of stripping steam. So, in your opinion, does heavy diesel side stripper have an impact on the total diesel cloud point? The answer is of course no. Since the lightest molecules of heavy diesel are revaporized towards light diesel, this has absolutely no impact on the heavy molecules of heavy diesel. So, the cloud point of the mixture of light plus heavy diesel is unchanged. And that's how we arbitrate the quantities of naphtha, kerosene and diesel. Of course, should we treat a different crude, the flow rates would be different, since the yields in naphtha, kerosene and diesel highly depend on the crude nature itself. Also note that the flash point and the freezing point properties of kerosene, as well as the diesel cloud point, depend on the nature of the crude, whether it is paraffinic or naphtenic. Finally, note that the distillation column is usually equipped with flash point, freezing point and cloud point analyzers that display the values on a real-time basis. This highly helps the control panel operator to optimize the column. Here is the final profile of liquid flow through the column. You can see that the minimum flow of liquid in the column is the flow that flows from the tray above the feed tray. In fact, the vapor feed rises in the column, then is condensed at the top of the column, and then the products are withdrawn in liquid form. This liquid is called overflash. We will see in the following video how to optimize it. As far as energy balance of the column is considered, I remind you that we need 127 gigacalories per hour to heat and partially vaporize the crude. We also see that we lose a very large amount of calories since we condense and cool the head of the column using an air cooler. In fact, this amount of energy is so important that we cannot afford to lose it to the atmosphere. So, we need to find solutions to recover at least part of it. But how? We will see that in details in the following video dedicated to the thermal integration and energy optimization of the atmospheric distillation process. See you very soon in the sixth video dedicated to the initial distillation of crude oil. In the meantime, do not forget to test your knowledge by answering the quiz which is available in the description of the video. Do not also hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Refining is Exciting. See you very soon and thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye!